Today we're going to start learning about JavaScript and how we can use JavaScript to change and manipulate our HTML and CSS code. We're going to learn how we can store data with it throughout the semester. We're going to learn how we can use it to change the interfaces and make more intuitive and engaging interfaces. But today we're just going to start with some of the basics. So first, what is JavaScript? JavaScript is a scripting language. It is a way of going step by step down a script following the the code that's put in for in front of us and it was designed to create uh, to manage and manipulate HTML so to be able to add interactivity to different HTML pages so if you think about the little sliding text that you might have seen the crawler coming across the bottom of the screen that's an example of one of the early days of JavaScript being used on HTML pages when we say it's a scripting language, what we really mean is that it's a lightweight programming language that follows a particular order. Okay? It is interpreted and executed at the same time. So when you build an app, for example, you have to compile that code, and then that compiled code runs on that machine. Well, in our case, the code is as it is, and it's on the fly execution. So whatever's written there is what will be executed in the order of which it comes. So there's no compiling step. It just does it by the browser. Now, JavaScript gives us extra tools. It gives designers the ability to program and do extra things with their HTML and CSS. It lets us, as I said, manipulate the HTML. What I mean is we can add content to it. We can change the look and feel to it by managing and manipulating the CSS. And so what we might present to the browser initially can immediately or at different events in time be changed to what the actual user sees and interacts with. It can also be used to validate data. So you've seen this where forms will say that username already exists or it's not in the right format. And so that is typically JavaScript that's doing that. In addition to validating the data, we can store the data and hold it in memory, but we can also transmit that data in and out to databases and other services. And one of the big things that really makes JavaScript work is its ability to work in, on events or to understand and react to specific events. So we can have events like on, um, on load, on click. Whenever certain things happen, we can trigger different pieces of code to happen on those particular moments of an event. Sometimes you hear people say, I know Java. Some people say, I know JavaScript. These are two very different languages. They are not the same thing. You can't use Java as a short form of JavaScript. If you want a short form, you can just say JS. So JS or JavaScript is what we are learning. Just to give you a quick uh, history lesson on this, Java was created by Sun Microsystems. They also created JavaScript, which was just a different form, uh, but they're actually very different languages. So they only have the same reason they have the same name is because they're really developed by the same people. So don't do this in a job interview. Make sure you say JavaScript, not Java. JavaScript is built on the ECMA 262 language, which is officially the standard that JavaScript follows. You don't really need to know that, but you should know that ECMA script, each one of these are all very similar. So when we learned Flash and we had uh, ActionScript, that was also built on the same thing. So if you hear most scripting languages are built in the same format, you learn one, you can learn another one very quickly. JavaScript came from Netscape. It first appeared in the Netscape Navigator in 1995. It was called Mocha, and then it became LiveScript, and then JavaScript. Um, also, at the same time, Internet Explorer had its own version of it. Um, and so you kind of had this little bit of a battle in the, uh, the mid to late 90s. Um, but ultimately, ECMA became the industry standard in 97. Then in 98, it really got started putting into multiple browsers. And we are now on version 6, which has been fully adopted by all the browsers. And so you can see uh, Chrome, uh, Microsoft Edge, all the Firefoxes, all the new Safaris. These are actually fairly old versions, but it's been in there since then. So we're very comfortable using uh, JavaScript in pretty much any web page that we need now. So let's get into the code. 
JavaScript must be surrounded by a script tag. So we've learned about tags in HTML. And so in your HTML, you're going to have a script tag to open and close it. You're going to have a script tag to open it, even if you're linking to an external uh, an external JavaScript file, or if you're using an embedded JavaScript, you will have the script tags. So why don't we go ahead and jump into this? I have provided for you a folder that includes the um, starting files that we need for class today. So it's called day one class start, and it has a CSS file, an index file, and a JavaScript file all organized in their respective folders. So I want you to open that in your favorite uh, text editor. I am doing that here in Atom. And uh, I'm going to open my index file. And we're going to start here. Okay. It's also a good idea that we open that index file in our browser. And we have that here. So it's a basic HTML page. It's linked to the style sheet, and it is also linked to an, a JavaScript file that I have included called main.js. Okay. Notice there's a script tag that opens and a script tag that close, closes. So that's in our HTML. We'll be able to edit and, and create our HTML. It looks like this for our JavaScript. Um, the JavaScript here is main.js, and I can type my code in right here for my JavaScript, um, and it'll just be rendered in the page as if it was right here in the middle of this. Okay, So this is really the basic way we will be doing it. But before we get into that, what I want you to see is opening the console and seeing how the console works with JavaScript. So the console is a JavaScript interpreter, and it interprets everything just like the browser does. So for example, if I say 1 plus 1, it interprets that and gives you 2. I can say x equals 5, y equals 2, x plus y did not work. Why did that not work? Oh. Case matters. JavaScript is a case sensitive language. I didn't realize it, but I had hit capital X. So X plus Y is seven. So hey, we learned something with my mistake. So X plus Y, and you see it was interpreted and in giving you the proper answer. And you could, I mean, this is not the most efficient use of, um, of JavaScript, but I wanted you to see how we can set things to different things. So I can say um, X equals Steven and then type X, and then it will give me Steven. It returns back a text string. So that is how a way we can see it and see how the uh, browser will interpret our JavaScript. We'll also be able to send and log messages there and send data there so we can see how things are being interpreted. So in addition to our HTML of having our script tag where we typically will link things, you could also do embedded scripts. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and right here as the page loads in the head tag, we could put in a script tag that says alert, hello world. And the key thing is I got to close that script. Okay. And so what this should do when I save it and then refresh this page, it pops up the alert message that says, hello world. So a simple script has just run as an embedded script on our page. So now I want you to do that yourself. Go ahead and write your first script tag, put in the alert message, and then refresh the page and see if it loads. We can also do comments and comment things out. So two slashes will comment out a line of JavaScript. Um, while we're here in our embedded tags, let's go ahead and learn um, the, the syntax of really how we um, work with JavaScript. So JavaScript selects a piece of HTML and then can perform a function on top of it or can perform a command. So in our case, we're going to select the document 
And by that, we mean the actual HTML document that we're in. So document.get, and then we're going to use element by ID. Notice that it is case sensitive. It starts with lowercase, and each new word is a capital letter. And note that ID is a capital I, lowercase d. And then we will actually put in whatever the ID of the HTML is that we want. And so in this case, I'm going to just do it with demo. And then what do we want it to do? We're going to use the inner HTML command. And we're going to say, I am learning JS. Okay. Now we're going to end every command with a semicolon. So select the document. Inside the document, find an ID called demo and select it. Then we're going to run the inner HTML command and we're going to put this text in there. Now, what we don't have right now is we don't actually have an ID called demo. So let's do div ID equals demo. Close the div. So we now have our div inside of demo. But if you were to refresh the page right now, you would get a major error that says it's not found. And the reason is, is because remember, it's a scripting language and HTML in the browser renders top to bottom. And so what will happen is this code would try to run before the div actually gets written onto the page. Now we're going to learn how to deal with this in other ways later on. But the first thing what we need to do is we need to move this to a different place. So we were doing this inside the script tags uh, that was embedded, but what we probably should do is do this with an external sheet, and we're going to move it to the bottom. So you see down here we have our main.js is here. So what I really want you to do is to cut this and save your HTML page. Go to your main.js file, paste it in there, and then save it. So now, when I hit refresh, it says I am learning JavaScript. So the way the browser just interpreted that was it went through here, it ignored this particular JavaScript because we commented it out, it wrote the HTML, and it happened in a millisecond, so we didn't see it, but demo actually came in blank. And then when the script ran, it then replaced the div ID of demo with the text that we provided. So that is our first JavaScript command of selection. Now what I want you to do is we are going to um, give an ID to the HTML of headline. And what I want you to do is come in here and select the headline ID. Helps to spell it right. And then uh, I'm going to save that. So I now have it selects the document, selects the ID called headline, and puts the HTML in there called hello world. And so let's save that, make sure we've saved our HTML. And then now when I hit command R to refresh, you see the headline was updated. So we've just done some basic commands, or one basic command, but using the selection that is available in JavaScript. As I said, we can embed things and put them in the, the head tag. We can uh, embed them in the body and actually do inline scripts, which we probably are not going to do often, but you do see this a lot of times with advertising and being able to put modules and things into people's uh, existing pages. So you're pulling something from an external site into that. You might see that as inline scripts. Um, but then we also have linked, which is what I just showed you. Um, and that's how we want to work most of the time. So almost all of our JavaScript will really be written in our main.js. So let's go ahead and remove the script tag that is the embed in our HTML. Okay. Now, don't forget, 
Don't forget JavaScript is case sensitive. So we want to make sure that we watch our capitalization. If you, something's not working, you get an error. Most likely that is what it is. It's a space or a capitalization that might be there. Also note that we end them with semicolons at the end of every line. And uh, we want to make sure that we follow those steps. Even though the browser might run without the semicolon, it's good to follow, uh, follow the standard and make sure you're doing that. Here's just that example of there it is in the head tag, and then here it is also, um, oops, sorry, here it is uh, embedded, and then uh, you can see it is, uh, is linked into the inside the body of that. So either one is technically works, but we're going to use linked style sheets in our case. Now let's talk about variables. Variables allow us to store information to store it for a temporary amount of time, but it allows us to replace um, and do this. So just like when you were doing algebra, you're doing any basic programming concept, a variable stands in for something. Now in uh, JavaScript, we don't actually have to define our variables, although we do have variable types, we don't have to define their type at when we do it, the browser will automatically interpret what type that it is based on the data that it is given. But knowing those types are really important. So number one is you can have a variable that is a number. It is a mathematical number that can be operated on. It can have mathematical operations. We also have text or strings. Okay, So a text variable or a string uh, has quotes, and it is a string. If there were numbers in there, you couldn't actually do math on it because it thinks it's text, not actual math. We can also have some custom variables like dates and time. And so we are going to test a little bit and do that in our JavaScript. So go back to your main.js. And here we're going to create a variable var my number equals five. So I did my number var equals five var my text var equals Steven and var my date var equals new date. This is called a function um, and it's built into JavaScript and we'll talk more about functions a little bit later but just know that you can put this in and get the date. And so now we're going to do a new command called console dot log and that allows you to log or put information into the console. So you remember how it said document dot get element by ID. So look in the HTML document. In this case, it's saying look at the console and do the log function. And so in our case, let's just go ahead and log my number var and see what happens. So save it, make sure both are saved. And then we're going to go refresh our page and you see the number five appears here. So let's leave that, and I'm just going to kind of do several of these. Let's go ahead and log the uh, my text var, so you can see what they look like, and my date var. Okay. So these are in the console log. Note that Stephen, the text var, is written as text. It is white, and it is not the same color as the um, as the number. So in I, my case, my number is purple. It could be red. It could be green, um, depending on what your settings are. Um, but in this case, it's different than what you're seeing uh, than a text variable. Also, you'll see that um, the date is actually coming in as text. It's a date object that can we can apply and do other things with, but you'll see it's being displayed in its full GMT format. And we'll learn how to deal with that later. Okay. But at our basic level, a variable stores information so that we can replace it or use it in different ways. Okay. The data types that we have available to us in JavaScript are strings or text. So strings, numbers, booleans, so that's true or false, arrays, which we will get into, but it's essentially a list of variables or a collection of variables. Objects are really a grouping or a list of arrays. 
Uh, and then literals is a data object or a more complex list, and we'll get into that. That's a fairly new thing in the last few years that um, that's really become a big and helpful piece in JavaScript. The ones we're going to work with um, right now are kind of the top four, um, but we will get into objects and literals later on in the semester. There's also a new variable that has you know, come out in the last few years called constants. And so you may see this, and I point this out. We don't need to necessarily use it for what we're doing, but in some of the documentation that you may be looking at or some of the standards that you may be viewing, they may use constants. Essentially, a constant is a uh, variable that holds a value, um, but it can never be changed. So it's initialized at runtime. So as soon as that page loads, once that constant is set, it can never change, whereas variables will change them over and over again. But it's not likely we'll be using it for what we're doing. Okay. A big thing that makes JavaScript powerful are events. And events trigger functions. So the two of them really go together. We'll talk about loops and arrays going together and events and functions. So we're going to have an event such as on load, on click, uh, on blur, on focus, all these different events that we'll have will eventually call a function or a set of code the to be run. So let's look at an example of a function. So in my code, I'm going to go ahead and declare a new function. And we're just by typing function. And then I give it a name. So we're going to call this my function. And then it has a curly bracket that opens and closes, and you put the code that you want to run inside of those curly brackets. And we want to tab space it in uh, to make sure that we are um, inside of our um, function so it's easy to see and read. And But a function is typically two... Um, you use two words for most functions and you use camel casing and all of our variables and things in JavaScript. So my function is it's a good one to, to use um, in this case given with the capital F. And so what we're going to do is this is going to run a particular set of code when we call it. So let's go ahead and move the hello world function. I'm going to cut that or sorry the hello world, world command and move it inside the function. Okay, so by itself, the function does not run until it is called. So right now, I have a function, it sits there. If I refresh this page, that hello world is going to disappear, and it's going to say what the HTML originally said. Because at this moment, the my function has not run. If I do want to run the function, I can do that by just calling it again. My function, parentheses, semicolon to end the command. And then now, if I hit refresh, it did run. Okay. So what happened was this code, uh, when it was executed, it went down this page, got to this function, stored what it wanted to do or could do later, and then waited to be called. It was called, and then it ran back up here, ran that code, and executed. Now it's happening in milliseconds, and so we don't really get to see it, but that's what's happening. So that is a basic function. So what we want is an event to call that function. So let's go back to our HTML. So here in our HTML, I'm going to create a button element. Okay. And we're going to have the on click event. And what do we want it to do when we click it? We want it to call my function. And then we need something in our button uh, here. So uh, test me and then slash button. OK, so now I've added the button code that should call the my function function. Now I want to go back here and I'm going to remove this um, this call that we had because I don't want it to run until we click the button. So save it. Make sure your HTML is saved. Refresh. It still says learning JavaScript. You see my button has been added. So now I'm going to click that button and it says hello world. So the event was a click event. The function was my function and then it ran the code once that event was clicked. Now one weird thing is I said that we tend to use camel case in JavaScript, but because this is in HTML, 
This on click happens to be a lowercase c because it's in the HTML. Um, but in most cases, whenever you see it, you will see camel case that we'll be doing. But I did want to just point that out. That's a little different because we, we're doing that from a click event that's coming from HTML. Here's the most common uh, events that we see. On change, which is when something has been changed. On click is when someone actually clicks or on the tablet presses. Uh, on mouse over is a hover state essentially, but it's a JavaScript version of the hover state, not just the CSS. On mouse out is when the mouse rolls out of the hover state or that rolls out of that element. And then key down keys, especially in gaming, uh, when you have keys to press, those are really helpful for being able to do things quickly. And so you can have a, an event for a very specific key, keyboard combination or a single key. And then on load we use a lot, so after the page has fully loaded. Now I've already shown you some of the uh, JavaScript uh, console, but I also want to um, show you what happens when you misspell things and show you some of the common errors that you see. So for example, in my uh, main.js, if I don't get these right, this looks gray. Okay, so that's one way to see it. But then if I refresh this page, I thought I would actually get this error. Um, it did not error. I guess it just ignored it um, because it didn't select it. But let's try, um, what if I give a variable that doesn't really exist? Um, so I'll just do lowercase, save that, refresh it. And then I get an uncaught, uncaught reference error. So my date, because I used a lowercase d, has not been defined. Well, it was defined up here, but it was defined with a different spelling. All right, so we want to make sure that. So you see reference errors a lot. Um, sometimes you'll see something like if I try to, um, let's say if I ran a function that said um, console.log my number var plus my text var. This will be an interesting one because it doesn't really error, but it doesn't do what we want it to do. Okay, So think about what you think it might do. Now, let's refresh it. And we get 5 Steven. It did not add those two things together. It basically concatenated. It put two things together because one is a string, one is a number, and it just assumed those two things were supposed to go together. So you could do this. Hello. I'm going to put a little space in here because I know it's going to need it. And it puts this together. So it says, hello, Stephen. Um, or I could do a mathematical operation. And that does work. Okay, But use the console. The console is going to be your friend. It's going to help you find all of your problems and errors. Concatenation is when we put two things together. We use this for lots of different forms of text. Um, and when you want to uh, display things. And so sometimes you'll have a variable plus text plus a variable. And you concatenate all those things together. And those uh, provide you um, the ability to write sentences and things with variables in them. So we'll do a lot of concatenation in this class. We can put things in the console, as I said, and it's not just limited to variables. There are lots of things you can do in the console, especially when you're trying to debug and work through issues. And so you will, you don't know what's going on. You can do console log. You can also use the console info uh, function and provide just the send the data in that doesn't actually um, give you like an error looking message. So lots of different things we can do in the console. So our basic things we did today was we had a learned about variables and how to put JavaScript into our HTML page with variables on it. We learned how to have events and have events that triggered functions. And so what I want you to do is to practice this. So I have given you uh, a set of files that I want you to download. You're going to go into those uh, files and make your changes right there in it. So let me show you what that looks like. So here I've given you the HTML page 
for you to do this as well as the uh, JavaScript file that I want you to work on. So here it tells you what I need you to do is write the JavaScript to display the current date and time and then have it display inside this answer box. Okay. So if you were to look at the JavaScript for that, and I'm going to drag that to Adam. The JavaScript for that, I've given you commented out places for you to put in the answers for each of these. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this and then you're going to um, post it to GitHub. You're going to post it to your server and you're going to provide those links to me through Sakai. The fourth part of this is going to come from the textbook, so the learning JavaScript textbook. What I want you to do is to really go through chapters one through chapter three before Wednesday's class. Okay, but chapter one has a, a little mini tutorial. It's a hello world. It's basically what we did in class, but it also has a um, a little piece about drawing uh, drawing on the canvas. And so that's what we're going to do uh, for your fourth thing. So what you're going to do is follow the instructions in chapter one's hello world and draw the graphics in an ID called main canvas. And so when you look at the HTML code, there is an ID here called main canvas. So you've got to have the book. You got to go through chapter one to be able to finish your assignment. You're going to turn it in through GitHub and and uh, and put it on your server and put links to both in Sakai. Okay.